Real life gameplay is the heart of Star Wars Destiny. There's nothing quite like the sound of big chonky dice rolling that makes the game come to life. Hitting R three times in a row isn't quite the same thing as picking up a pile of big chunky dice and tossing them onto a playmat. Tonight's guest is leading the charge in revitalizing both IRL play, but also IRL casting for Star Wars Destiny. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved in the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, my Star Wars Destiny friends, and welcome back to Dice Commando and the Commando cast, and happy Destiny Friday. Today here with the friggin' tank. How's it going, my friend? How are you doing? It's it's going really good. I, uh, I'm, I'm one of the cool kids now. I'm on Dice Commando. What can I say? This is awesome. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're all the cool kids. All, all 37 of us left or whatever right, it is. Right. <laughs> that many. Wow. Okay, good. Yeah, well. Good to yeah. know. So, I mean, I wanted to have you on because, I mean, obviously you and I have been talking for many, many, many moons. I don't, yep. I don't even know how long. But, yep. you know, that as you're well aware, that kind of the start of my channel many years ago was gameplay. Mm -hmm. IRL gameplay specifically, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something I haven't been able to really do in my area since destiny went away yeah and if we're being honest i think scum and destiny and what you're doing up there at silver sun mm -hmm. you all might be our last best hope <laughs> for irl destiny coming back to not only obviously the people playing it but but the youtube so could you mm -hmm. you know maybe bring folks who don't know you up to speed on who you are and and really what you're doing with scum and destiny and what you're driving at silver sun all right. Well, I mean, as you said, I am what the friggin' tank. Uh, you see the little um, oh, backwards. That's there over you go, here. You got this, it. Little, this little guy there. It's so hard to do backwards. Uh, I'll, AKA the Lord Humongous. Um, just a cosplay thing I did, but uh, there's a couple. Uh, I don't know. Go watch Beyond the Wasteland. Go watch Mass Mutilator. You'll see me in there doing uh, my my stuff. Uh, but Scum and Destiny. Um, so Silver Sun Games, Montgomery, New York, that's been my local for a few years now, ever since Highlander Games in uh, Boonton, New Jersey, kind of shut the gate on uh, on uh, Destiny. A lot of that had to do with COVID, unfortunately, plus FFG obviously pulling the plug. Uh, so Chris Costello, the owner of Silver Sun Games up there, uh, he and I have been working together closely for a couple of years now, trying to get first our local scene kind of back online after COVID uh, went away. Uh, easier said than done. It's been slow going, but like, you know, one new player here, one new player there, just mm -hmm. over time. Uh, we I put a banner together for the front window with a you know big Star Destroyer coming through the clouds and TIE Fighters flying at you. It says, hey, we're an official ARH location. Come in and play. And uh, don't know if that ever actually worked, but uh, gotta, we're trying everything we can. Um, so Scum and Destiny, had, I mean, so... We've got our group of like five core players, let's say, and we're like, oh man, we should do some some YouTube, uh, you know, IRL uh, webcam gaming, uh, just just for the fun of it, because it's you know talking deck tech and rolling some dice, and and nobody's really doing that right now. And so we're like, you know, maybe we'll call it Fly Casual. That sounds pretty good. Well, wouldn't you know, you know, somebody already had Fly Casual, and I couldn't really make the logo work anyway. And then our our buddy Al was like, how about Scum and Destiny? And I'm like, that's that's good. That's good. We're gonna we're gonna be Scum and Destiny. So uh, I butchered the uh, the Empire Strikes Back logo and uh, completely uh, made it our own to bootlegged it. Um, but it's it's something that we've been talking about now for well over a year. The intro has actually been put together for, for many, many months. The YouTube channel has been locked down. The Facebook page is happening. It's a matter of time, mm -hmm. really. Uh, we were recording some stuff, but it wasn't quite dialed in. We had to build the whole uh, webcam apparatus with the mics and trying to get the audio levels right. With my history, having worked with the with the Misfits, having been their tour manager and being a big part of their production in the past, I'm very particular with audio, video quality, audio levels, the whole bit. I, I can't just put something out there that's that's half-assed. I've got to dot every I and cross every T and then go back and double check it, and that just takes so way too much time. So th this event that we just had last week, or a couple weekends ago, rather, uh, the Renewed Prime that was like the catalyst. That was the thing that like made it all happen. Like we have to launch this weekend and it's just got to be live. We just got to, you know, cut our losses and, and just roll with it. And it, God, it worked out a lot better than I expected it to. Like, you know, fingers crossed here. 
Um, everybody had a good time with it. We got to utilize our uh, our fancy table, which uh, kind of kind of a tip of the hat to to you because you had that um, that design for like a portable sort of uh, destiny table, which I always thought was really cool. Um, so ours is is uh, kind of kind of a rip off of that. Um, but yeah, it was um, the, <laughs> at long last. The time has scum. That that's uh, that's where we <laughs> open with all that. So it feels good. Feels good, man. Finally getting it done. Getting it out there. No, I mean it's it's good stuff, right? And you know, to your point um, about you know not wanting to put something out unless it was uber tier quality or whatever. I, yeah. I completely respect that. You know, that said, if you go back and you look at some of like my like my first gameplay videos are awful. They're yeah, horrible. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> Um, right. I think people are pretty, pay, especially when they're hungry for content, which I do believe the Destiny community mm -hmm. is, in mm -hmm. terms of actual like chunky dice rolling. I think they're going to be pretty forgiving yeah. on that. You I know, hope it's, so. Please, it's, it's easy to record stuff on TTS. Very easy. Right. right. But right. IRL yeah. content is very much needed, and I think very mm -hmm. much respected. So please do not, do not hesitate to produce that content because worst thing that happens is nobody clicks on it that's the worst yeah. thing that happens yeah i'm i'm all about it i've never been a fan of playing on tts it just feels chunky and it, it's it's not the same it's not the same as like you said i you know having the handful of dice and throwing them on the table mm -hmm. and and you know you know come on need a new pair of shoes here uh it's it's a completely uh sort of tts is just unattached and it doesn't feel uh real and it's not um but uh one of the things, and I know you and I have talked about this before, is is I, I don't have a lot of free time. Hence, Scum and Destiny just now getting to to you know casting when we've been talking about it for years. Um, so when I watch a YouTube, you know, a TTS feed or a, a tournament or something online, I'm in my car commuting to work an hour each way. So it's on YouTube on my phone. I'm not actually watching it. I'm I'm watching the road, hopefully, uh, but I'm I'm more listening to it. And if there's no banter between the players or there's no commentary of any sort, I'm completely lost. I have no idea what's going on. I mm -hmm. can't even glance over the screen on my phone because I can't see what the cards are. So I, I know you and I have talked about what T3 used to do back in the day with mm -hmm. their uh, IRL matches. And they talked their way through what they were doing. It was like they were their own commentators. And I could follow that mm -hmm. play for play for play. And I enjoy it. I, I still watch those reruns, even though they're not, uh, they don't really apply to anything today. It's still, uh, it's still like old discard to reroll episodes. They're, they're, they're great. I'm going to listen to them because they were just mm -hmm. enjoyable. Same idea. So that's one of the things I pushed for my guys uh, and, and, and some of the uh, the other people with us um, that came over from the UK and from around the country. We're like, hey, just you know, talk about what you're doing, talk about talk about your deck as you're setting up before Chris gives us the go sign. Get a banter going so whoever's listening, if they're not watching, they're still following along and they're still enjoying. Uh, you know, get hopefully getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that model very much works when you are. Um not necessarily in like a live stream tournament atmosphere, right? I mean, to ask some, you know, at a top table, you're in the zone, whatever. I, I think mm -hmm. it's hard to ask people to necessarily do that. But, you know, I think it's reasonable to say, hey, I'm playing, yeah. I don't know, whatever I'm playing. Um, right. But if you do recall, I, I used to do the commentary over mm -hmm. the games that I would record. And mm -hmm. that's, it's a lot of work. I mean, I would say oh, yeah. this, this was pre-kid days and yeah, my, my yep. wife, Amy knew that I would go up on Sunday. Like we'd record on Saturdays, so, you know, I'd go up on Sundays and I'd kind of be mm -hmm. there for a large part of the day. Yeah. Uh, Cause it kind of trans like, you know, my normal videos, if I record a video, it's about three X the recording time to get a video up. Right. Yep. But if you're doing commentary, yep. it's probably conservatively five to six X. And that's, yeah. that's a lot to ask, right? And I, I yep. don't know that people appreciate that. So, you know, I, I would like yeah. to encourage you to just <laughs> just throw it out there, right? Throw just the roll with out it. There. I mean, yeah. just roll with it. See, see what, see what yep. you did there. Right. We, uh, again, going back to what you've done, and, and uh, thank you for all that you've contributed to the community. I mean, out of, out of all the old school uh, content creators, you never left. You never pulled the plug. You're still here. You're still plugging away. And uh, I mean, hats off to you, brother. That's uh, that comment. How many? You're, I know you're over 300 on the Destiny side of of. Uh, do you have an, a, an episode count still? Uh, oh, I, I do. I, I don't know what this one will be. Um, it's it's kind of bad timing that we bring it up because last Friday was actually the first one I've missed. Yeah, 
Kind of um, almost my fault though, because we couldn't get our schedules to sync up. Well, so. no, no, it All was right. not. All it right. was not related to you. I had one in backup, but I, uh, mm. I was travel. We went basically camping last weekend. I had no internet. Oh, cool. And cool. Uh, okay. I realized Friday morning. I was like, oh, yeah. shnikes. Whoops. Whoops. I, uh, you, get, you get a pass for that. Sorry. One. Camping school. Cool <laughs> there was nothing I could yeah. do about it. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I often, I had plans for doing, you know, overlaying commentary. Um, I wanted to do almost a, a Mortal Kombat ripoff where, like, if somebody rolls, like, crazy god roll damage like i pop up going toasty you know something <laughs> silly like that just to just to make it fun and you know and round one fight and they go in and they do the, and it sounds great it sounds really cool to be an awesome show but damn that's a lot of work man the sound effects the graphics popping in all the layers and stuff i don't know i don't even have time to wipe my butt how am i going <laughs> to put this video out so I think live streaming and just, you know, giving it the best shot we can is, is really our only option at this point. Yeah. Hopefully well, it works. I'm very excited to see. I mean, even if even if it's not necessarily live, right? You recording mm -hmm. you and your buddies at Silver Sun doing your thing, I think is gonna be mm -hmm. absolutely huge. I mean I hope it, so. it will be if if you guys execute if sorry, if you folks execute to your plan, because mm -hmm. I know your your wife uh wife now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your wife is in it as well, or at least she used to be. She used to be. Yeah, we have a two-year-old. She'll be two Wednesday. Um, and so, yeah, once, like you know, once the kid had come along, things uh, change a little bit. Schedules right. get a little tighter. Sleep is uh, few and far between. So, yeah, hopefully it'll come back around. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, but when you folks get your, your stuff together, um, mm -hmm. just record it. I, I, I mean, you <laughs> again, you are the, as far as I know, the only folks that are going to do this right now. You shall least. see. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, more, so. we've got on the sensors. I know they're doing some TTS stuff. We did do some webcam play with them and I, and I'm always on, you know, he know my, I'm always on Majo's but like, Hey, let's get another podcast out. Let's talk about destiny. Let's keep the, you know, keep the momentum going. And you know, everybody's all for it, but then work happens and life happens. And before you know it, it's the end of the day. And, where did it all go? So right. we just got to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And you, you again, are a stellar example of like just keeping that schedule going. Well, except when you're camping, but just making it happen and no excuses, no prisoners. Forward, forever, forward. Yep, absolutely. Well, I mean, again, if you have a regular group, I mean, you could pound out three videos on a yeah Saturday or or whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. So and, and luckily we we've got Patrick PE. Uh, who many of you on Discord know? He, he plays in the TTS leagues every every uh, week, every day, every day. Um, he's always pushing, like, "Hey, we're getting together Friday. We're getting together Friday." Uh, luckily, he lives like two minutes from Silver Sun, so it's easy for him. Um, where I'm like, I'd like to be there every Friday, but we'll see. Um, and some of the other players, you know, they want to be there in spirit, but again, life gets in the way. So we're we're just we're gonna do what we have to do and like you said me if i get together to record six matches i could put out two this week and two the next week whatever we got to do i i want to i want to be there for the community i enjoy putting on a, a show so to speak um i know uh el rathion and i talked at the renewed prime as we were uh the the top two match uh against casero and patrick we actually had a monitor out in the main room so nobody went in the back room we just mm -hmm. let that we left them alone with just the camera rolling and uh, Rathion was like, why don't we do commentary? Like, you know, back in the day, like FFG used to do with Matt Holland and those guys. And I was like, I would love to do that. Like have Elrath as like the analyst and me as like the color commentator, you know, it's sort of a la dodgeball or something, just having a good time with it, but being informative at the same time. So I think uh, moving forward, maybe that's something I'll um, look into, perhaps. You got you to gotta get the kit for that there, Cotton. But uh, Yeah, you know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, so... Uh, so uh, this is not in the questions that I sent mm. you, but with your folks coming in real life, how mm. often do you see, because, you know, one of the things that is staleness, right, in terms of bringing yeah. videos. So right. in terms of actually converting the cards that we have into physical cards, mm -hmm. are, are, are y'all just buying the sets from like Kingwood or, I mean, it's got to be hard to physically print all this stuff and proxy it, right? So, yeah. how much? How much? You know, does someone just make a deck and they fly with that for three months, or what? What, what do people really do up there? Well, I can tell you what I do, and we'll start there. Um, I did buy uh, because my daughter Sylvie plays with me as well. Uh, Faye, unfortunately, like I said, hasn't been able to play since Audrey was born. But uh, 
I would get two of each set, whether it was from uh, Trey or whether it was from Sarah or back when Julio was still in the game, um, and and roll with that. But I often I'm I'm bad with taking decks apart. If I build mm-hmm. a deck that I really love or does really well, I I won't touch it. But I'll go to make another deck and be like, oh crap, I don't have the dice, I don't have the cards. Right. So I I I luckily I have a, a strong background in graphics, so I just I pull the images off the the uh, ARH p- uh, PDFs. I lay them out in Photoshop and a template that I made. It's a double sided. I'll take them to Staples to print on uh, Cougar Matte stock, which is like a, a very quality card stock. And I've got a paper cutter and a corner punch. And, and you would swear I, I bought these cards from from Trey by the time I've got them printed out. I'll, I'll uh, real high quality at the, the Staples uh, printer behind the counter. They do the same thing with the labels, print them out on the vinyl uh, matte paper, hmm. cut them out on my, on my Cricut. Uh, it's a lot of work though. Right. It's, it's fairly cheap. I had a connection at Staples there for a while, but my buddy Henry uh, moved on to Greener Pastures. Um, so I've been trying to do it at home. I've, I've got a laser printer. I'm trying to rebuild and long story short, maybe that'll happen. But for the time being with everybody that we had come in at the, for the renewed prime, I'm building decks for this guy. I'm building decks for that guy. Okay. okay. I just, yeah, I just printed out on laser paper. So it looked nice, uh, like nine cards per page, cut them out with the paper cutter, slip them in a sleeve behind a card, label up some old dice and just, okay, just go with that for now. And if you like that deck and you want to keep it then we'll print some real cards up for you. So we're kind of in limbo as far as mm-hmm. are we buying cards? Are we making cards? I'd love to make everything in house, but again, time, I, I don't have the time to, to print off entire uh, sets of cards for all my guys and cut them out. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Right. Yeah. I mean that, that was more the impetus of my question is, you know, that because mm-hmm. when, when ARH first started, I was doing that. I, I was making mm-hmm. full sets and it was just like, this is ridiculous. Like why? Like, and I mean, yeah. whatever. I mean, you all get it, right? Everybody watching yeah. understands the pain. But if yeah. you are, if you're essentially the drug dealer, then that that kind of makes sense, <laughs> right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I have not picked up Resurgence, at least not a full set. But I've certainly printed cards and dice labels from Resurgence. So I'm kind of at a point now where I'm just building d- decks in the DB, mm-hmm. and then I'll I'll just print off the cards and the labels I need for that deck mm-hmm. and run with that. So maybe I'm changing gears to where I don't have as much physical library which is kind of a godsend because it takes up a whole corner of my uh, game room plus a lot of space up in the attic so yeah maybe this is a good thing yeah well i mean yeah i don't think you need every card but you know to your point like you said earlier sometimes you need like six of every card so yeah. or yeah. six of a specific <laughs> card, right? yep most definitely how many headstrongs do you have printed out like probably 20 right you know what i <sighs> I don't. I, okay, Polyfly will tell you I'm not known for playing mitigation, and when <laughs> I do, when I do, it's because I'm running Dooku, um, and that deck, that card doesn't fit in a Dooku deck. So I honestly, I'm probably like the guy that only has like two copies of Headstrong, and that's maybe maybe four copies total. That's been about it. <laughs> so, uh, wow, I, maybe I should do something about that. Yeah, I'm, no, I mean, fair enough. Point. So I, I mean, maybe I ch- maybe I chose the wrong card, but you understand, you understand my point. You understand. Yeah. I, I have, after the deck that I ran at uh, Gen Con, I have like 20 copies of 8D8 because I, I ran a, a K3PO burn deck with Crate Dragon Lair and uh, 8D8ing him back just time and time again. Like poor K- Casero and Norman both got burned pretty badly by that deck and they were like, what the hell's going on here? I'm like, I've, you know, it's just how I roll, man, literally. So. Or don't roll in that case. Or de- exactly, you got to do it out because I'm. I, I said I think in one of our uh, early uh, Scum and Destiny uh, casts was I'm the only guy in history to ever roll double blanks on a single die. I, I swear <laughs> I, I have. I am so notorious for rolling blanks. I, I playing against my old buddy Kip uh, via webcam in the early days of doing that. I had I had my X wings out. You know when you could have four X wings in your deck, and I rolled each one of them in. I hit a blank every freaking time. Like, who does that? This guy. So, uh, yeah, the more burn I can do out of hand, I'm all for it because I can't bank on anything else. Fair enough. Well, maybe we need to build you an Inquisitor's deck and you can go. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Well, while I've got you, what's your kind of state or your take, sorry, on the state of Mm -hmm. Destiny kind of on the whole, both, you know, in terms of actual play and meta and all that, but also just kind of you know, community and where we stand. What are your thoughts? I I think the community is very strong. Um, I love going. uh, So we we had people come into Silver Sun that I had never met before. Just a few months ago, we went to Gen Con and you're, you know, the names from 
to chatting with them on Discord or, or just seeing their names pop up on Discord, now you're finally putting a, a face to the name and a handshake to go with it. And when you're all done, there's a hug to say goodbye. That feels really good. Um, and it's, it's, I, I've yet to find a, a bad apple in, in the bunch. Um, I mean, everybody that we've, we've come together with, well, like we leave just like the, the best of friends. We can't wait to get together again. I mean, not only are we all star Wars fans, we're all gaming fans. We're all, you know, geeks getting into this, this silly stuff. Um, there's a competitiveness, but it's, it's a friendly competitiveness. Nobody's being a, a jerk out there. I pretend to be a jerk sometimes, but it's all a shtick. Don't worry. Um, so that, that feels good. I, I wish I had time to be more involved with the online, the larger scene. Um, again, I, I sign up for the TTS league every month. Um, I've been, I've signed up for dice commando stuff and I, I just can't get there. I can't yeah. devote the time to what uh, to you. make it happen. It's, it's frustrating, but you know, I, and again, I see these names come and go and I'm like, I know, I know who that is. I know who that is. I wish I knew them better. Um, cause the only way I'm going to become a better player is if I just keep grinding those reps with everybody who's online. Perfect uh, example, Patrick on uh, our scum and destiny team started playing, uh, you know, he and I went to gen con 22 got our asses handed to us, came home with our tails between our legs, and we're like, guys, we got to we gotta step up our game here. We got to start playing ARH. We got to figure out what we're doing. And over the past year, he has just been grinding out reps and grinding out reps on TTS every week. And he made top cut. He made he came in second out of out of 20 players from around the world. I mean, wow, dude, that's, that's amazing. Um, I need to follow his example and find some free time and, and do this. But it's it's more than it's more than just sharpening the blade. It's it's getting to know these people that uh, I, I you know I just I I'm I like to I, I'm a people person obviously um, that's why I push the IRL. But I can I can obviously talk online just like we are here. Um, you and I have never met, but I feel like I've known you for years. It's you know we got the the, the thing going on. Um, so I'm I'm very happy to be a part of this. Uh, it made me sad to see the the big scene that we had kind of fall in on itself once covid and ffg pulling mm -hmm. the plug happened um i pushed as as you and i have talked about this i pushed to get people back on their feet but hey if you if you want to walk away from something that you swore you'd never walk away from that's that's totally on you bro uh whatever star wars unlimited is now breathing down uh the back of our neck it hasn't fully gelled with me yet i did play the demo at at gen con it's cool because it's Star Wars. It's cool because it's a card game. It's cool because, yes, it is an FFG product, and they do make good games. Hopefully, they got their OP figured out this time. But I don't think that's going to take away from our scene because our scene is – is we've, we've got a core devote. I mean, there's nothing like rolling dice. If you're not rolling dice, the game is just like, I don't, I don't know if I'm into that. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if there is some kind of a crossover that happens because the two kind of overlap a little bit here and there. I guess we'll know come uh, what is it next March? I think is the uh, the release date for that. If they the, can make the, the release launch. date, if they, <laughs> yes. If they hey can make that release date, yeah. <laughs> oh, ouch! Dang! Wow! I didn't say that. That was that was the other guy. <laughs> no, they. I, I, there's zero doubt in my mind. I know we're going way off topic here, but there, there's zero doubt in my mind that X, that FFG is going to execute way better on this yeah. new, new game. At least for the first couple of expansions, they probably right. they probably right. actually hit the brakes and made sure that they, like. The container yeah. was here, right? right? Yep, yep. Um, and then the, you know the other thing is they're they're moving to a much smart. They're moving to like an uber rare model where you want to chase right. the foil Darth Vader or whatever, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. will help them sell more product. Which was a huge problem they had in Destiny. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yep. I, I think this is going to succeed for the time period it will. Um, they're probably really upset that it took them two years to get here because Lorcana mm -hmm. released and all that money's wow. going over to Lorcana, which is yeah. an absolute cultural phenomenon right now. Right. But that's a whole different cast. That's a whole and I you know, I I don't know if I should admit this openly, but I am a bit of an IP snob. Um I not into the Disney thing. I mean, yeah, I've I've got little kids at home that mm -hmm. haven't really caught on to Disney yet. So when I see people playing Lorca, ah, you should play, you should check it out. I'm like, nah, that's that's not a game I have any interest in. It could be the coolest, funnest game to play, but I'm just if the I if I'm not hooked on the IP, I'm I'm just not gonna be passionate about the game. Um, you know, you give me a Star Wars game, you give me a Lord of the Rings game, you give me a Mad Max game. Oh, that'd be so cool. I'll I'll be all over it, but uh, Disney, I'm just mm, I'm I'm not there. 
Sorry. Yeah. Dude, we should do the Mad Max game. That sounds fun, actually. You ain't kidding, brother. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Thought about it, that for years. I, I don't I don't know how much you've looked at Lorcana. I, I'm really also... I'm with you. I'm really not interested in the game or the mm -hmm. IP. Uh, the game mm -hmm. itself is actually, like, pretty functionally broken. There's a, There mm. are several cards in that game that are reminiscent of some of Magic the Gathering's most busted cards from, like, 30 years uh, ago, and they're bringing them back I, again. Like, there's, like, a zero cost... <laughs> There's like a zero cost, discard your hand and draw it again. Like mm. I've seen that card before and it got yep. banned real quick. And but so I don't think people are in it for the game. I think they're in mm -hmm. it for the IP. Um, mm -hmm. and that's not a bad mm -hmm. thing. That is not casting right. stones. Right. Um so I you know, I, and I think to a certain extent that F that where I'm going with this is I think to a certain extent FFG's game will be fine for five, six years as long yeah. as you can chase shiny Darth Vader. Maybe not yeah. five, six years, th two, three years, whatever. FFG right. seems to seems to lose focus of their products in about a year and a half yeah. to two years, right? So yep, yep. We'll see. Yeah, I have. I, I mean, there are so many. I know. Uh, I, I think it might have been Drew Warren uh, talking about this on on discard to reroll. Was uh, looking on the game shelf, which I, I'm surrounded by them here in this room. Actually, uh, there's so many FFG logos on the side of so many boxes I have here. They make great games, Absolutely. but a lot of these games, uh, I mean. Uh, Warhammer 40k collectible card game, mm. uh, Game of Thrones collectible card, uh, living card game. All these games that have like, they've just come and gone. They were great for a few years and then poof, they were on to the next thing. So yeah, I don't know how long this will last. Um, thank God ARH is now being run by people who have the passion, that love the game, that aren't in it for the, uh, obviously aren't in it for the money. We can't be. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's it's headed in in the right direction. Um, of course, when when the whole you know transition took place, FFG left, ARH, TCI, NDH, Godroll, like all these other people were coming in. We didn't know what the hell was going on with the Wild West, uh, but the smoke settled. ARH seemed to be the the uh, the VHS, you know, beat out Betamax or Blu-ray, beat HD, whatever. Great analogy! Um, wow, great right, analogy! Right, yeah, yeah I, and I was it's sad because I was a, I was a Betamax fan back in the day, and I was like, what do you mean VHS one? Uh, no, what am I what am I going to do with my Sony stuff here? Um, but it's it's uh, it's the LCG format we always talked about, <clears throat> Mr. Chip. Uh, it's it, it doesn't cost us anything. You can print it for free now. Um, they, we've even got epic characters with three dice. Where did everybody go? Um, I, I I love where it's at. We've talked about power creep. It's inevitable. It's going to happen in every game. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just stale, and we're just rolling the same dice over and over again. And and who wants to do that? So I love the direction that everybody's taking it in. Uh, Elrathion, Echo 3, like just everybody who's been involved with designing and putting this stuff together. Please don't stop. Please don't stop. This is one of the greatest games I've ever played. And I've played a lot. Like I said, I'm surrounded. I have a whole game room in my house that uh, uh, my wife's not uh, real happy about. But um, it, it's just a thing. So um, let's do this, man. What, what are we up to? Eight, eight sets now? Come on. Let's get, I, I want to hear it for 20. Star Wars uh, Decipher's old collectible card game is still going, thanks to the fan, 20 years later. I think ARH can do the same thing. Oh, there's there's no doubt, as long as, yeah. uh, as, long as the oomph is there, right? Mm -hmm. And you know and what? I will do what I got to do to make that happen, It man. might be Keep eight pushing. dudes in a Mad Max truck designing Destiny cards <laughs> in 40 years, but whatever. There you go. Yep. Right. Yep. No, yeah, I mean... I, I don't really know what to say. You, you you said it quite well. They they're doing well. Um, mm -hmm. Did you know, by the way, that mm -hmm. in April we will? Uh, I think it's April fourth. I did the math the other day. Mm -hmm. April fourth, we will have been independent longer than we were supported by FFG. Really? Oh wow! I, I, That's... I, don't quote me on the exact date, but it's okay. In, it's in April of twenty twenty. That's really honestly. cool. Okay, that. Wow. And FFG put out, what, nine full sets plus a little bit of, you know, this dribs and grabs the other yeah, thing. We're, we're not going to count the transformations. That's, yeah. No, 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 it didn't really count. That was a COVID uh, mishap. Hey, um, what's your take, by the way? So Wild Horizons, mm -hmm. I know, I mean, the set that didn't exist. I know, I know that you never looked at a Wild Horizons PDF, but if in theory you looked <laughs> at a Wild Horizons PDF. Sure. What's your take on that? Would you have wanted um, to see, like, what do you think about, like, a new color? What do you think about new, I mean, I don't mean the specific cards, but the concept. Like, right. what's your take on that? I thought uh, bringing in the green color, the wild, literally the wild cards of the Wild Horizon, I thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, events, events that had dice with them. 
Now, I, I know that's not like, you know, you're going to play it once, roll it, like, okay, boom, it's done. But what a cool twist. Again, the epic characters were there. The, I believe the Crate Dragon was a, a three-die monstrosity. I... Damn it. Yeah. This close. Agreed. This close. Oh, yeah. I was really excited about playing a couple of our... I mean, I, I didn't see anything. But if I had mm-hmm. seen something, I would have been very mm-hmm. excited about playing like the wolves or something like that. Yeah, right. yeah. So. And I, you know, I, I get, I'm, I'm, if ARH anybody on the ARH design team is listening, I mean, green dice. That was it was kind of cool. Just saying. Hmm. Oh, I can resolve your die. Oh, 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 let me see what's going on here. Uh, yeah, could be a thing. Who knows? Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. That's a weird mechanic. But the, <laughs> going into the new color. Um, I don't know, but it's an interesting can to pop, right? Because as soon as you mm-hmm. pop the lid on that, then they're like, well, why not another color? Yeah, uh, right, right. That's right. Yep. Why not? Why not rainbow dice? <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen, if you caught wind of the uh, the promotional tanks. Uh, so th- there's there's a, a sister program uh, that goes with Scum and Destiny. It's going to be called Tanks Jankyard, which that'll be coming soon. Tanks uh, spo- Jankyard? That ta- yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, I'm known for building the <laughs> jankiest decks in in Destiny, so we're gonna we're gonna make a, a episodes on just uh, just tanks jank. Um, but there are some promotional dice that have been going around the uh, the ARH uh, Destiny circuit, and it's uh, tanks jankyard die, and uh, every single side is a blank. A blank. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I also hear that uh, tanks jank is also on OnlyFans if you want to subscribe to that. So. <laughs> Yes, please. I, I could use the uh, support. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, I think I think we should probably sunset this before we get ourselves yeah, in trouble. But yeah, band or something. Yeah. So, can you please let the folks know who's here at this point, which is probably you and me and everybody else is right, right. But that's fine. Yeah. So, where can <laughs> folks find you? And do you have any shout outs you want to give? Uh, well, there is uh, a Scum and Destiny Facebook page. I guess just search for Scum and Destiny. We're about and to I'll come up. Link it right here. There you go. Okay, cool. Um, there's a Scum and Destiny uh, YouTube channel. It's had several links in uh, Discord. Uh, I do have uh, the content creator uh, secret access to the uh, ARH content creator channel. So as uh, new episodes come out, they'll be posted up there. Um, uh, we're not really doing anything on on the Twitter or the Instagram or any of those other things. That's that's really the main two. Um, I've got an email address, but who uses that anymore? But that's that's really it. As far as the shouting out, I mean, to the whole community, because you guys are awesome. You make all this happen. Um, my own, my team, uh, Scum and Destiny with 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 Patrick, with Mac, with Scoundrel, with Sylvie, with with Justin, with Barrett, um, uh, Al, Chris, Baron, the list goes on. Uh, but big, big, big shout out to Chris Costello, the owner uh, of uh, Silver Sun Games. I mean, he's been on the Destiny scene since I think Spirit of Rebellion. And uh, if you ever have him on the show, you have to ask him about the time that he gave Drew Warren a run for his money at uh, at uh, Highlander Games. He played. He was playing. I, I think it was a Millennium Falcon deck. He did something, and Drew was like, "Wait a minute, what did you just do?" <laughs> so uh, talk about some uh, some bragging rights right there. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Chris, for for making all this happen, for putting a roof over our heads, for believing in us, for supporting us, uh, for letting us be who we are, uh, the, the the scum that we are, uh, in uh, in the same room with you, because you are a class act. And thank you, Andrew. Uh, seriously, I know I, I say it a lot, but I really, really mean it, man. You've been keeping this alive. Huge fan, and it's definitely an honor to be sitting here chatting with you right now. Oh well, thank you, and thank you for for making the time. And you know what? You just reminded me of another cast. So let's put a pin in that and we'll come back to it maybe in a month or so. Okay. But I would really like to hear how you've been able to keep your LGS engaged in terms mm-hmm. of making it profitable for them or maybe not profitable, but at least right. worth their time. But that's yep. definitely something for another cast because that's a huge and very important topic Indeed. that we're trying to do. Yep. So let's definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll book you for whenever we can figure it out. You got it. Anytime. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's hard as we've been talking about the time is hard. So thank you for taking the time. And again, I really want to encourage everyone go check out what they're doing, right? IRL play is the end all of destiny. Destiny only wins when you play it in, in real life. So what they're doing and bringing it to the YouTubes or at least trying to bring it to the YouTubes 
is pretty impressive. So anyway, thank you all collectively for you and all of your folks for what you're doing. Keep it going and say it with me, buddy. Mm -hmm. Go Commando. Go Commando.